afternoon. It's the House Agriculture and Forestry Committee. It is February 9th, 2022, and it is the afternoon just after lunch, and we are going to hear about food security. And we have with us two folks from the Agency of Agriculture, Food, and Markets, and we're going to start out with Diane Bothell. So Diane, why don't you introduce yourself and Take it away. All right, thank you, Madam Chairperson. Diane Bothfeld, Agency of Agriculture, Food and Markets, Director of Administrative Services and Dairy Policy. Um, here today to talk about the report uh, that we were was requested last year in Act 47 regarding food security um, in the state as well as our emergency annexes, how we, how we address uh, uh, food and local food within our emergency activities for the state. I'm going to concentrate there and Abby will give you an overview of other activities that are going on. So it's kind of um, um, split on what occurs during an emergency and then all the ongoing work around food security in the state. Emergency is, you know, uh, could be a weather emergency. Uh, the uh, State Emergency Operations Center, the SCOC, um, is activated. That pulls in many facets of state government. Agency of Agriculture is certainly one of those, but almost every agency in state government has a role at the Emergency Operations Center. Um, and the roles are defined, but not tightly defined because what's the emergency? What's happened? Is it a weather emergency? Is it a uh, issue with, you know, we have, we have gotten down into the weeds of somebody sprayed anthrax on State Street in Montpelier. What, what happens then? So there's all these different potential emergencies out there. And currently the State Emergency Operations Center is active dealing with COVID, but they can also activate different agencies so the Agency of Agriculture is not activated in the current um, situation with COVID. We don't have the skill set they need. Um, so uh, at this point, we're not active. Earlier on in 2020, the agency was activated and assisted with resources that uh, we could bring to bear to help and you know, this was a very terrible time and, and tremendous concerns, but we were asked to find potential cold, cold storage if mortalities were so high that we didn't have mortuary to take care of um, the mortalities. And so finding agricultural activities that would have large cold storage was part of our role. So we get involved in some pretty interesting and wild stuff. Most of our activities are around animals, um, produce, um, and uh, the things that we regulate on a regular basis, but the areas that we would have authority in are usually what we're involved in. So this was an addition to our uh, emergency annexes. And if you look at those documents that Linda has um, been working on scanning in, you can take a look. But our, um, our annex document is long and has a lot of things in it besides the um, food, food security. So we have put together a document. We made uh, uh, three changes to that and they're pretty broad, um, but also give some direction of what we would do. Um, and that is on page two of the report that we provided. And, and Linda can give you the heads up of when those are available as, as we get checked out of what we provided to you um, for document security. But one of the things that we will do in our emergency annex around food security and trying to get more local food products into emergency operations would be to appoint and maintain a permanent representative to the State Emergency Operations Center mass feeding group. So you think about mass feeding, what's mass feeding during an emergency? Um, if you think about um, a flood situation and people have to be evacuated from some part of a town. Um, so if we looked at Barrie, downtown Barrie or even downtown Montpelier with the river can certainly flood. If you had to evacuate people from Montpelier, you would put them up in some high point. Maybe you take them up to Vermont College on top of the hill. That's where they're going to evacuate to. They can you know, be safe there out of the floodway. But if you're asking people to evacuate and go to an emergency shelter, you need to feed them. Uh, you don't want them going somewhere else to go find food and, and putting themselves at risk. So those would be a mass feeding situation of uh, people have been asked to evacuate. They're an emergency shelter and they, they need to be fed. 
So the Agency of Agriculture won't be cooking soup and grilled cheese sandwiches. That's not our role. Uh, the Red Cross has tremendous resources, the uh, Department of Health, uh, Buildings and General Services. There are a lot of other people that have a lot more skills in this than the Agency of Agriculture. What the Agency of Agriculture could and will do would be the potential of getting Cabot cheese into those grilled cheese sandwiches or apples from some of our local orchards or other products that can be um, can be located and provided but it is it is it has to be quite broad because where's the emergency and what's the impact so in our response to this type of emergency in our document we have put in coordination with the SEOC mass feeding group the agency will work to integrate Vermont grown food into emergency mass feeding response when possible and appropriate by providing contact information for local growers, producers, and processors in the state. So we would come forward, um, say they wanna have apples in the mass feeding event at the emergency shelter. We would come forth with names of people who would have potential that many apples, um, where they're located and who that contact is. There's a total logistics group in the operations center that they would do the rest. So the agency might make that first phone call and say, hey, um, apple grower in Grand Isle, we need apples in Montpelier, we need 20 cases. Uh, you're gonna hear from the National Guard that's gonna send a truck and get them. Can you do that? And here's the price. Or maybe we know the price, maybe we don't. The rest goes off to logistics and the agency's done. But we can't say it's always gonna be Grand Isle because maybe the roads are flooded and you can't get the apples out of Grand Isle. You have to get them from Addison County or Rutland County. So all these variables are in there. So it's very hard to be much more specific than that. Uh, but we will try to integrate more Vermont agricultural products into that uh, mass feeding event. Uh, and then the last area that we changed in our, our um, emergency annex was the um, we, there's a checklist that's used at the um, State Emergency Operations Center um, of who does what that's easy for the, the uh, person in charge of the State Emergency Operations Center to see who does what. So it's just a checklist. We added to that that we would assist the mass feeding group to locate and access Vermont food and farm products during mass feeding events as available and appropriate. So quite broad, uh, but also that flexibility is there for us to be able to um, take part, have a representative and uh, do that work to try to get more Vermont products into those mass feeding events. So that's the emergency aspect of it. Um, and so I will stop and let questions begin if, if uh, and Abby will talk about the more non emergency or the work that went into, we did bring groups together to get to this point, uh, but I would let Abby talk about that more than the um, actual operations of, a, of the State Emergency Operations Center. All right, thanks, Diane. Um, questions from the committee? Yeah, could I? This is yeah, Heather. This might be whimsical, but I'm fine with that for myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering, we talked about wanting to reach out to local growers and Vermont growers in order to have that capacity to know who we can reach out to in the moment of emergency. But do we talk about wanting to grow certain storage crops for those moments, like beans or wheat? or corn to grind for those instances too. And I wonder if we ever think about reserving land for those purposes of food security too, on a grander scale, because those last also. Yeah, I think that's an important aspect. And I think that may be more suited to where Abby will go in the, in the further discussion of food security for the whole, the whole <laughs> state and what's going on regionally. I think it's a, being cautious of oh, please grow corn in case we have an emergency isn't where we want to go. We want people to have a market and, you know, have some, because maybe an emergency never happens and what do you do? Um, we're not proposing that the Agency of Agriculture or any, anyone else in state government purchase products to hold in a warehouse just in case, because that we don't know. And, and that's in a way potentially wasting food. Um, you know, we bought all this corn and held it or these beans and held it and they do last a long time, but then when they do reach their date of no longer being viable, what do we do with it if there was no emergency? So um, it's more of a just in time activity than a build a warehouse, hold all this food in case there's an emergency at some point. 
Sure, and I guess that, that is a good point to think about too. And I guess additionally, I'm sure you could find a place for that food if it was grown on like an annual basis of preparation or something along those lines of, of donating it or using it to feed communities instead of holding on to it. But yeah, absolutely. I hear that point too. All right, any other questions for Diane? Well, that sounds good, Diane. I, I'm glad that, you know, we're sort of shifted our attention on this topic. And, and so why don't we move on to Abby? Abby, thanks for coming. Thank you, Diane, for your time. Thank you. And I'll, I'll hang in until close to uh, 1.30 <laughs> and then exit to go talk to Senate Appropriations. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Abby. Thanks all. Hi, Abby Willard, Vermont Agency of Agriculture, Food and Markets. Um, so Representative Supernata, I'm happy to kind of address your question. And I, and I think um, what Diane just described was a, a relatively simple addition to the agency's emergency annex that we were able to do to just ensure that food security was captured under the agency's responsibilities. And therefore, as Diane said, we would be activated in an emergency that required some feeding um, assistance. In the conversations that we had around making these very simple modifications to our emergency annex, we recognized that there is this greater statewide need and effort already underway around establishing a food security plan and that we really intentionally decided to hold that effort um, aside and, and teach and treat these as two separate initiatives. So when um, the Vermont Sustainable Jobs Fund and the agency collaborated on the creation of the Agriculture and Food System Strategic Plan um, about a year ago, one of the goals was, um, it reads, Vermont's food system is resilient and able to provide adequate and accessible healthy local food in the face of emergencies, including climate related natural disasters. One of the objectives was that we would update the agency's annex, but the other objective is that Vermont would establish a statewide food security plan. And so that effort is underway, uh, led by the Vermont Sustainable Jobs Fund and Farm to Plate. They're thinking of this as a two plus year process that really focuses on preparing for the next emergency and creating a statewide security, a statewide food security plan for, for Vermont. And that plan is where I think some of that thinking ahead of land production and storage crops and storage locations would really come into play um, as, you were, as you were discussing and, and proposing. The plan that is underway is really focused on looking at long-term food security for the state and food access for our most vulnerable populations and doing that during a time of emergency. So it is designed to be uh, normal day food security, ensuring that we have less food insecure individuals in the state, but also figuring out how we respond during time of emergencies. That process is gonna have a really robust stakeholder engagement process. So engaging with the impacted individuals and communities to understand what they need, what would work for them, um, what efforts would be kind of most desired and hopefully many of those aspects being captured in the food security plan. And the interplay that we've talked about is that the state's emergency operations center mass feeding group and the agency of agriculture's annex would really be embedded efforts within this statewide food security plan as to how the state of Vermont government entity responds when we face an emergency that includes some food security concerns. Um, so if it's helpful, I could share, and you know, Ellen Kaler is really the, the lead and the vision behind this food security plan. They have, so Ellen, I think, and, and her staff could offer additional details, but my understanding of this food security planning process is that the Farm to Plate Network has established a food security group that the Agency of Agriculture has a representative on, as do many others. They've hired a food security project manager. Her name is Becca Warren and she's leading the conversations and the development of how this food security plan would come into place. Some of the first steps are both assembling the, the group, but also aggregating research 
on the causes and contributing factors to food insecurity in Vermont. And then acknowledging that probably throughout the process, but also in the latter part of the plan development would be this robust stakeholder engagement process that's really designed um, to help determine the, what the critical components of the plan would be and how it should be implemented. So that effort's underway. Um, and I hope that that sort of describes how it interplays with what's happening with the mass feeding group and uh, the interconnection between what our annex will do in the time of an emergency and, and our role as an agency in this statewide planning process. So Representative Supernaut, did that address kind of your thoughts around where, yeah. where those planning efforts might take place? Definitely, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, Abby, do you want to tell us more about um, this uh, food security planning situation? I'm not sure that I have a lot of other details to provide unless <laughs> there's questions. All right, Tom. Abby, um, just from, from the uh, citizen's point of view, um, the hurricane hits tomorrow night and it's, it's threatening my home and my family. What do I do? Who do I call? What, what's, what's the end point on this whole thing? <laughs> so I can, I will try to uh, um, address that uh, representative. The, um, if you're in that emergency situation and you're worried of flooding or wind damage or those kind of things, the first, the first call is to local. <clears throat> The, the town, the local sheriff, depending on where you're at, what do you got? What do you, what's in your town? Um, they would not be calling the Agency of Agriculture if the floodwaters are rising and they need help. Um, there is a hotline number for the um, State Emergency Operations Center who would also potentially dispatch, you know, swift water rescue or, you know, there's a lot of resources there. And everybody, it's really, it's extremely prescribed. This is your lane and you stay in it. You know, agriculture isn't supposed to go, you know, moving over into other areas. So the the example of Irene, when the towns of Rochester were cut off and hand, potentially parts of Hancock, the roads were just decimated and you couldn't get there. Um, we got in a little bit of trouble. Um, lots of food was going in there and the National Guard was utilizing helicopters and moving product. And we heard that people needed dog food and pet food. And so we organized that and got it all ready. And the, the pallet got onto the helicopter and then we got really scolded of, how'd you do that? Well, our resourceful folks were at the SEO scene and got it all done, but they were really focusing on human food and were not happy that we, um, you know, got that pallet of dog food in there, even though, you know, it was needed. But so everybody has a lane and they really are to stay in their lane. So if you are in trouble during one of these weather type emergencies, mm -hmm. it is your local assistance, uh, then the, potentially the hotline into the uh, state emergency operations, 911, et cetera. Um, but then the resources come at you from the SEOC back out. If it's a farmer that's calling in saying, the floodwaters are rising and, and my cows are in trouble and you know I'm I'm stuck. Um, then it does come to the agency because it's agriculture and we would work. Um, some of the examples, I guess, from Irene again were, you know, what can we get to those um, animals that were isolated in, in um, Rochester when Irene flooded everything out? The Agency of Agriculture really comes in in the emergency aspect after the the uh, holy moly, or there's other words for that, the holy crap moment that things, people are in extreme danger. It is dangerous out there. That, those, is, those are not our skill set at the Agency of Agriculture, but the rain has stopped. The flood waters keep rising. We got to get these cows out of here. The agency would utilize its contacts with the licensed uh, livestock dealers we have. Is there anybody in the area? Can we get farmers to bring their their trailers? Can we get those cows out of there? You know, that's that's where our skills start to come in and that kind of example. So it it really is a stay in your lane kind of activity at the SEOC. Um, and um, there are tremendous number of resources to be allocated. And it is it is a if at some point if you could ever go there when it is in full activation, it is very impressive of how that is managed and operated and and done statewide, if you ever get a chance. But that would mean things are in a very bad place and maybe you don't want to go there because you can't get there from here. 
The only thing that I would add to Diane's example is it, again, using Irene time where the Agency of Agriculture gets involved is around um, adulterated food. So if food gets flooded and then the farmer has a question as to whether that product is suitable for sale or suitable for human consumption. So again, you know, it's either dealing with their, their livestock and their animals and barns, but also the food that then they might um, want to engage in the marketplace. And currently there, if you haven't seen the news today, there is a outbreak of avian influenza in a commercial turkey farm in Indiana. And so the, the um, state emergency operations center could be, operate, could be brought into operation just for an agricultural emergency, which if we had avian influenza in any of our commercial flocks here in Vermont, or even on a few farm with a few chickens, that would probably, um, the agency would be highly involved we would have to have the Department of Public Service, police, sheriffs, um, and probably a and potentially of, of high mortality of how do we get rid of lots of dead chickens uh, and turkeys. But those, so there are ways that just agriculture gets involved and others, not many others would be involved, but so there's, there's lots of potential there. So lots of activities. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Other questions from the committee? I know that you all um, support the governor's budget as presented, uh, but I do understand that there uh, is a request, I suppose that Ellen is making, not you, uh, for $150,000 to go toward um, a food security effort. And I'm wondering if you can say something about what that effort might be if the money was forthcoming. So yes, uh, Chairperson Parcher, we, we do support the governor's budget as proposed, but I would let Abby uh, uh, state more clearly what, if money were to be found, of course, not us asking for it, but what would that be used for? <laughs> yeah, right. So there's always that, that tricky piece. Um, I think we're really fortunate to have the Vermont Sustainable Jobs Fund and the Farm to Plate Network taking the lead on the development of this statewide food security plan. Um, I think some of the steps that I outlined earlier about standing up the working group, hiring the food security project manager, working on aggregating the data on the root causes of food insecurity, and then that stakeholder engagement process would all be, I would imagine, components over the next two years that those resources would be critical for. So my understanding from, from Ellen is that there have been some dollars committed um, and obligated to the creation of this plan, but that they may not have the full budget for the two, two and a half year process required for the creation of the, the food security plan. And I really, you know, from my perspective on the plan being led by Farm to Plate feels like the appropriate place to me, especially since this plan will be robust and utilized if it has lots of public engagement. And I think they are well equipped and situated to lead a really kind of engaging public participation process. And I think that'll be really essential to a plan that will then be implementable and, and that people will have confidence in relying upon or taking response, various responsibilities for different goals and objectives within the plan if, if they've had a hand in its development. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I'm very grateful that they've taken this responsibility. There's always that, that burden that accompanies the responsibility is figuring out how to pay for it and finding the staff capacity within their team to lead it and then kind of gathering all the voices and all the research to, to put together a really meaningful document. Great, thanks Abby. Any yeah. questions or comments for Abby? All right, um, Abby, did you wanna add anything? I don't think so, it's nice to see you all. I feel like we can chat about a myriad of other topics, but I think this is what we have today for food security planning. Well, thank you.